Sharon, remember me? Yes, ma'am. So she's gonna help out a few nights a week. Oh, I met this woman. She's a mess. Perfect. She's One of my favorite Christian movies was Case for Christ. I love that movie so much. How do you pick these? Like, what what draws you to the stories that you pick? Well, you know, it's interesting how stories make their way to you, right? Like sometimes it's a project that I have a real heart for or that I've been, you know, pursuing and other times they come to you, right? So uh, with Ordinary Angels, it was interesting because I was in the midst of doing a, a slate of movies with Lionsgate and the Irwins, right? So I was writing and producing um, a whole bunch of movies and directing some of them, uh, including uh, you know, American Underdog, and I Still Believe, and Jesus Revolution. And in the midst of that relationship with Lionsgate, they came to me and said, we have a project we really love that we feel like would be a good fit for you guys. And they sent us the script. And it was, you know, you get a lot of scripts, you know, in the process of developing a slate of films. And most of them are are not great and hard to read. Um, the moment I set this down, it was a script written by Kelly Freeman Craig. And it was just lovely to read. And you know, um, really compelling. And so they said, do you think you'd have a take on this? And I immediately said, yeah, John Irvin and I sat down together and, um, you know, we did a pass at it for our own, you know, sort of to find our own voice and our own way in. But there was so much good material from Meg Tilly and Kelly Freeman Craig's drafts that existed before us. And this, the true story uh, was kind of hard to believe, you know, and yet it's it's one of my favorite kinds of combinations where it's got real life issues, real stakes, you know, it's not a movie that has easy answers, um, but it's got so much hope and so much joy at the heart of it. And so I really enjoy that balance. And I think this is a movie that is uplifting and hopeful. This is a movie about community coming together. Um, and it's a story about how helping other people can help us heal ourselves very often. And I love that message. Um, not to mention that it had just a really cool third act in a snowstorm, you know, that, that was kind of an action sequence at the end of a drama, which I thought was cool. So uh, yeah, so this kind of made its way into our life and it had been a project that had been uh, in development for 15 years or more. And in fact, right now, the true story of this happened in January of 1994. So next week is exactly 30 years from when this took place. Oh. And so it had been in development for so long uh, that I got to be the guy that took it over the finish line after a lot of producers had been uh, and and writers and filmmakers had been um, ushering it along. So uh, it was a real gift in that way. Well, there's a lot of great messages in there. You know, there's there's a lot of depth to it. Um, but talk to me a little bit about, um, you know, the real the real life people that this is based on and stuff. And um, I'm sure you can. Did you connect with them and stuff like that? And what was that kind of process? Yeah, you know, I've done a lot of true stories, uh, many actually, A Case for Christ was one of them, um, American Underdog was one, I Still Believe was one, Jesus Revolution was one, uh, and uh, I have another film coming out later called The Unbreakable Boy that's also a true story, uh, and so I've done a lot of these, and I, I, I love them so much, right, because it's such a an honor and a gift to tell somebody's life story, um, but also there's just, you know, there's so much to work with and to pull from these Sharon Stevens, who Hillary Swank's character is, is based on, um, is just a firecracker and, and is sort of an immovable force, right? And um, and Ed Schmidt and his family um, are, well, yes, I've been very involved with them. And, you know, they've been through such struggles and heartbreak and yet are such like uh, strong spirited people. Um, his daughter, Ashley, who's been really excited about the movie coming out and has been, you know, shouting about it uh, and doing local press in Louisville, Kentucky uh, a lot lately. They're just wonderful people and their story is incredible. They're humble and strong. And, you know, when this movie came to me, it was called Angels. And I renamed it Ordinary Angels because I like this idea about how all of us, any person, you don't have to have a high position or some great title or have invented anything amazing, right, to, to change the world for individual lives around you. And so I've been closely involved with them through the process. I've sat with them and screened the movie and cried together in person, you know, with their community around us. Um, it's such a community story. And uh, I think Louisville, Kentucky, 
Everybody remembers that snowstorm from January 94. Everybody remembers the story of the snow baby, which is Michelle and her story that's at the heart of this. So uh, there's a lot of real humans, real heart, you know, real community that's, that this movie is based around. Yeah, I got to move to Kentucky now. <laughs> I got to get yeah, that I know. Here I am outside of LA and it's not like that, but. <laughs> and, it's, and it's interesting, you know, it really is like, I love that it's a reminder of a time when neighbors take care of neighbors, you know, regardless of political affiliation or beliefs or anything, it's just somebody needs help, I'm going to help, you know. Uh, Sharon showed up because she could, right? Um, and, and I wrote that into the script where someone says, why is this your responsibility to save this girl? And she says, because I'm here and because I can, you know, um, that's enough reason to do good things for people around us. I thought it was interesting too, and, and a good thing, right, to talk about addiction and it's such a hard kind of topic, but you did a, a great job with it. Um, and it's not really shown in faith movies a lot, right? We haven't seen something like this before, but I thought it was a really good, um, you know, conversation on that. So could you talk a little bit more about, you know, that doing that part of it and, and your heart towards, um, you know, that kind of conversation? Yeah, you know, I, I love movies that grapple with difficult things, you know, and, and, I, and, I, and I don't like movies that have simple answers to real complicated life. You know, people watch films and I think they're to some extent you want hope and you want escapism, but I love stories that reflect truth. And so if you're somebody who's struggling with something like addiction, that is not an easy struggle and there's not an easy answer, you know. Um, even faith in God doesn't make addiction an easy struggle. Um, and very often those kinds of struggles challenge faith. And so, uh, you know, I actually have done a few movies that deal with addiction issues. Um, years ago, I did uh, Like Dandelion Dust, which was based on a Karen Kingsbury novel, but uh, Nira Sorvino is the, uh, you know, plays the abused wife of an alcoholic husband, um, played by Barry Pepper. And so we dealt with that a lot in that film. Um, and, and in this case, you know, I mean, Hillary does a wonderful job in this role, like just extraordinary, you know. Um, and and I think it's a beautiful example of how she is a brilliant and imperfect person struggling with her own things. And yet by offering herself in all of her imperfection uh, to help this family in need, it helps to heal her. Right. And and so and and but that doesn't mean it's it's a it's a neat and tidy path. <laughs> you know, when I heard about the story, I was like, well, look. It's wonderful that uh, this lovely lady is doing this kind deed for this wonderful family. But the truth of these things is they're messier than that. And Ed was not a man who wanted her help, right? <laughs> and so we don't always, you know, we don't we don't always get to be in a position where we refuse help. Um, and, and his needs were greater than his capacity to handle. And so she came crashing into his life, like it or not. And there's sometimes friction in that. And her brokenness is a threat to his family in some ways because of her alcoholism. But that's part of the beauty and the messiness of it all. And it's truthful. And, you know, it, it, we don't show up at each other's doorstep clean and perfect, you know. And so uh, so I think that the addiction part of it gave a lovely truth and and a sort of flavor to the that that issue of, of imperfect angels and ordinary angels. Yeah, I love the title. I love, I think you did a good job on the change uh, or addition, mm -hmm. right? Um, it, just like that character, because it, it is saying that, you know, we can all step up, even if we have things that we're dealing with ourselves, um, you know, we can step up and help other people. Yeah. So I really love that. Um, I liked uh, Ed's character also. I thought he was really real and um, a different kind of character too for a movie role because he's, he's, um, he he was kind of internal right like he he you could tell he it was kind of more of a character that's you know taking it all in or whatever and so can you talk about your thoughts on how you wanted to make him appear yeah you know i mean it really sometimes truth can deliver really helpful dramatic elements right a lot of times when you're telling a true story you have to change a lot of the facts to make them more exciting um, or more interesting or to add more conflict in this case we literally didn't even address some of the struggles the family was going through beyond what the movie shows, you know, it, like that's how hard it was. And, and, and one of the challenges was that Ed is a very prideful man and a very strong man. And, and, and so I found it very helpful and very interesting that we have a woman who doesn't take no for an answer and a man who doesn't want her help. And is, you know, he's, a, he's 
he's a blue collar, hardworking roofer. And so it lent itself to some really good tension and also some really good comedy, quite frankly, because it's a good duo to watch them crash against each other. Um, it's funny for me to have to write a character who is a man of few words because I talk a lot and I always want to write it all down. And so it was an interesting challenge to kind of strip him away in many ways down to a to a, a man who's genuinely in survival mode, a man who is facing forces of nature, like life and death forces, you know. I mean, the antagonist in many ways in the story is nature. Like there's a tornado in the first act that threatens his family. And the third act is about a snowstorm that almost takes the life of his daughter. And so, um, or, or, or keeps the struggle for saving her, you know, um, right at their doorstep. So, uh, you know, Ed, Ed is a, I, I admire those kinds of people. He just puts his head down, works hard, and doesn't have to talk about it a lot. But Sharon kind of wakes that up in him and pulls from him, you know, a reminder of finding joy in life, connecting with his daughters, appreciating the things that are in front of him. So it's a really fun uh, interaction between the two of them. And, and also, by the way, by the way, I'm sorry to say, but like uh, Alan Richson, who plays Reacher, right, on Amazon, and most of his role, he's in Fast and the Furious, he's an action star. Uh, and it's, he's an in, incredibly, like, beautiful soul, great man, a wonderful actor. And I think this shows a side of him that no one has seen yet. And I love that. And I think he loves that as well. What a nice opportunity to play a mild mannered, you know, quiet, struggling man who isn't strong enough to take on the forces around him. He can't just fight his way through this problem. And I love, I love that it takes a, a little woman like Sharon Stevens to help save uh, his family, uh, which is so uh, antithetical to so many of the things that his action stars do, you know? Yeah, he did a great job. I mean, I'll tell you, I kept being like, he's so buff. And my husband was there. And <laughs> I was like, stop saying that. Um, it's hard not to say it though. It's, he's, you know, he's bigger than most humans, you know? And so it, when you see it, it's broad shoulders. Okay. It's just, yeah, so <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's a strong dude. Um, uh, no, they did a great job. I thought both of them did such a great job in their roles. Um, they seemed so perfect. How is it working with them? I, I know that he has faith because I've seen his, you know, YouTube. Uh, he had a YouTube talking about his faith and everything. So how is it working with them? Oh, I mean, it's, it's you know, first of all, I will say Hilary Swank is somebody who I admired for so long. Um, honestly, I, I couldn't believe it when we got her, you know. I mean, I saw Million Dollar Baby three times in the theater in a week, right? I love her in that film so much. And um, so this is kind of a dream to, to have that really work out. You know, sometimes you make an offer to an actor and you hope you're going to get them. And even when it seems like you're going to get them, it doesn't work out. And then Alan, we, like we had met and kind of really bonded prior to, you know, uh, knowing who was going to play what role. And it was so exciting to get him. I love that he was, in the moment in time, kind of a fresh face in a movie like this. Um, and of course, it's just exploded in the couple of years since we made the film. But also, they're just total pros. You know, I mean, your job as a director is just so wonderful when you've got actors at that caliber, right? And I feel like in these interviews, you always have to say nice things about your actors. But like, genuinely, these are... I mean, obviously, Hillary's won two Oscars. She's a wonderful performer, but she's also just a wonderful person. Alan is such a pro and such a partner that it was it was really a joy. And we were dealing with difficult circumstances. We were still in the kind of COVID -y era of having all the regulations on set. We were in extreme cold. You've ever been to Winnipeg in January? It is 30 degrees below zero, right? It is brutal. And so, uh, you know, I got to take Hillary Swank, a two-time Oscar winner, stick her in the snow and blow cold air all over her, you know, with with, with snow. Uh, and they handled it with such grace. And and I just love the work that came from that, you know, which is the, the really important thing. But it's such a pleasure when you get great work and you enjoy working with the people. Yeah, for sure. Um, I also liked the faith elements to it. I thought it was... Um you know, a good mix throughout. And there's some really beautiful moments, which I wouldn't want to say, I guess I shouldn't say, we shouldn't say. Yeah, we don't want to give it all away. Yeah. <laughs> but um, can you just, you know, speak a little bit more about, you know, uh, how you wanted to intertwine faith and, and how that was important to the story? Yeah, you know, I, I think that this is another, again, it's a true story and that's part of the true story. And I loved the idea that this was not a movie where faith was going to solve a problem easily. It really was more about the fact that we have a father who's lost his wife, 
whose daughter's life is on the line, who's swimming in debt, insurmountable debt, the crushing weight of all of that has hardened his heart, right? And 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 his faith has been tested in a way that he's sort of withdrawn from God, withdrawn from the church, understandably, sort of just, you know, angry, but in sort of self-protection mode. And so this is a movie about watching that hardened heart be softened. And I think uh, and, and in, a, in a very truthful way, sometimes through Sharon shaking up his world and showing him grace and sometimes through his own children, you know, who have recognized the change in him and, and miss that part of their life, the faith part of their life. So, you know, it's it's a it's an element of the story that I think is very naturally woven into the truth of what they went through and also um, a really honest representation of what that kind of struggle was like. This is our last chance. If we don't take it, Michelle dies. How did it become your responsibility to save her? Because I'm here. Because I can. If you enjoy videos that follow your values like ours and you want to help us continue, uh, go to movieguide.org slash donate because we're actually a nonprofit. You may not know that, but we're working in Hollywood every day to help families have more choices that follows their values. And also subscribe right now.